This is going to be a real short video on our new uh, bottom watering, automated bottom watering microgreens growing system. Um, we use these two large scaffolding setups we got for free. Um, we've framed out some platforms to hold these large, um, basically 11 inch by 48 inch um, greenhouse trays that we got off Greenhouse Megastore. Let me step up here so we can see. So these trays are kind of like our sump trays. Um, there's a main supply line right here, three quarter inch, and then we just popped in, let's see if you can see that with the sun. Um, there's a little tiny quarter inch valve that we can turn this tray supply on or off. Um, we just drilled a little tiny hole right through here, with a, I think a seven, seven sixteenths or seven thirty seconds, I forget which size bit. And then just use a 180 shrubbler on this side as our water emitter. So this thing puts out water, um, just on half, just so like just half comes. I'll, I'll give a shot when I turn on the systems you can see, but it basically just sprays down and you can twist it to adjust how much is coming out at any given rate. So you, you can adjust the flow rate. Um, we used some Schedule 40 and Schedule 20 um, PVC for um, kind of the, the under supports for our really flimsy uh, 1020 trays. So I think a lot of people use uh, the really flimsy black plastic trays for doing the microgreens, the shallow ones, which they're, you know, it's great because they're cheap, but they do break fairly easily and they're kind of, um, yeah, they don't have a long lifespan. So um, we were trying to do a bottom watering system prior to this using these sump trays, um, but I'd have to like manually fill in this gap each, each morning and um, these trays just barely fit end to end. So oftentimes they'd slip and fall in and then you get wet soil and all that stuff. So anyway, half inch schedule 40 or schedule 20 PVC holds them up at like a perfect height. Um, so these, these things are mostly sitting on the PVC. So just two lengths of that running down the bottom of the tray. And then we filled it, you can probably see here with sand, um, just a little bit, maybe it's just about like, you know, a quarter inch of sand the whole way up and back. So that way, if, um, for any reason, you know, some there's your tray isn't perfectly level and there's water at one end, but not water at the other end, the sand will carry that water to the other end of the tray through a capillary effect. And then the roots that do come out through the bottom of the 1020 tray, um, can, uh, still stay moist and interact with that water. <clears throat> so this is how it looks when the trays are unloaded. Just two pipes. Again, same supply system, quarter inch valve, little 90, uh, double ended barb, and then our 180 shrubbler. And then when we turn the system on, um, right now we have a one solenoid valve dedicated to this entire unit. And I think it can hold, what do we have? 10, I believe it's like a 48, 10, 20 tray system. So basically this whole thing with the two levels um, can run 48, uh, 10, 20 trays at a time of whatever microgreen we're growing. Right now this is cilantro, pea shoots in the back. And then in two days, we'll have our uh, spicy mix back out here again in the rotation. Um, so let me go ahead and turn the system on so you can see it work. And then I'll show you how the uh, individual tray shutoff valves work as well. And um, we'll make sure to have all the various links to all these components um, listed in the video notes if any of you are curious in uh, pricing it out or scoping it out for yourself. Okay, back. I just switched the system on manually right now just to give you guys a shot of what it looks like so we'll do one that is active right here so you can see it's just trickling down um, i think i have this run i think that the timers come on like three times a day for four minutes right now and that's been doing just fine even despite the heat um it's pretty limited evapotranspiration um just because the the trays are covering the the water so it's not really a big deal and then um so these trays are filling right here, and then you'll see if I just twist this valve 90 degrees, we could turn this off. So when this tray is not in use, we could turn it off um, and just crank it back on when it is. And uh, one of the things we're working on is a simpler way to basically disconnect these. So in case you know we get an algal overgrowth or something like that in the bottom of the tray, we can flip this out, clean it real quick, put in fresh sand, um, go for it. That hasn't been a really a problem at all, but the system's still young, so. We'll see how that works. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, and then some of you are probably wondering in terms of overflow, like how do we know it's right? So you can kind of see up there, it's dripping down a little bit, but right here next to the inlet for this, there's a mirror image exit hole. There's also one 
down here at this end as well. Um, so twice the outlet for um, one time the inlet. So basically the, the level of the water in, in the sump is self-regulating. It'll never go super high. And uh, yeah, that's what these guys look like. Got our peas in the back under the shade. Second level up above. The nice part about this is that we can do one level over the other. And because we designed all of the overflow points on the far side of this tray, none of the overflow drips down into the microgreens below it, which could cause you know, some of that, that top warding effect, getting all the potential for mold and other things like that that we're trying to avoid. Um, so this system right now for us, for me, it saved me uh, probably, I'd say we're, we're at least three and a half hours a week of like hand watering and like hand tending all these trays. We used to have each individual 1020 tray with one of the white um, bottom watering trays underneath it and I have to fill them manually and check and sometimes multiple times a day go through and you know just you're always running back and forth if it's a hot day you never know you might get some wilting and some loss um this system's been awesome it's like huge time saver as soon as the stuff is germinated i just put them out here let them go through their whole growth cycle don't touch them they're outside so we're getting natural light uh, natural airflow which is wonderful we did put up some scavenged uh 30 shade cloth on the sides and the top just to limit some of the intensity of the sun since our, our main crop, uh, cilantro, doesn't really like to be beat up too much by it, but the system's working out pretty well. So uh, hopefully we'll get another video maybe in a month or two if uh, we come across any kinks in the system and we'll demonstrate any fixes we have, but I think the most important thing is just get a level platform and then the water will play nice. And uh, yeah, save yourself some time, you know, automate the bottom watering. It's, yeah, it's been a tremendous time saver for us. So. Hope this helps some you guys. Check the links below for all the various parts. And then also there's an associated blog post with uh, pictures, construction photos, and also the same links if you are interested in putting together something similar for your microgreen growing operation. All right, thanks guys. Happy growing.